Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight we'll embark on a journey to the enchanting landscapes of Ireland where myths and legends come alive. This story, inspired by a suggestion from a neighbour and a listener of the show, brings us to a mysterious turlach near Giva in County Sligo and the ancient legend of Lou's epic victory. If you enjoy my stories and they help you get some good rest, think about tuning in to The Sleepy Scholar more often. And if you've got a favourite episode, why not share it with a friend or family member? Your support helps these stories from Irish culture stay alive for everyone to enjoy, now and in the future. Before we begin, get comfortable. Close your eyes and take a deep breath in. Then exhale slowly. Now imagine a warm, soothing light at the top of your head. As you breathe, let this light move down over your body, releasing tension. Feel it relax your forehead, your eyes and jaw. Let the light flow down your neck, shoulders and arms, easing away the day's stress. Feel it move through your chest, back and abdomen, bringing calm. Finally, let the light travel through your legs, all the way to your feet. With each breath, sink deeper into relaxation, ready for the tale of Lou's epic victory. Imagine yourself standing on a hill, overlooking a serene Irish landscape. The rolling green fields stretch out before you, dotted with wildflowers swaying gently in the breeze. The sky above is painted in hues of twilight, with stars beginning to twinkle, like tiny beacons of light. As you breathe in the fresh, crisp air, the distant sound of a gentle stream reaches your ears, adding to the peaceful ambience. In the heart of this enchanting land lies a mysterious thurla, a seasonal lake that emerges and fades with nature's rhythm. This Thurloch holds a secret, one that dates back to ancient times, when gods and heroes roamed the land. It is said that this Thurloch was formed by the legendary Balor of the Evil Eye, a fearsome giant with a gaze so powerful it could scorch the earth. Tonight we will explore this legend and the magic it brings to the Irish countryside. As we journey through the tale, 
Allow the calming images and the gentle words to guide you into a restful sleep. We journey now to a quiet evening in the Sligo countryside, near the village of Giva, where the landscape is dotted with ancient stones and hidden paths. As the light fades, a soft twilight settles over the rolling hills and open meadows, and a hush falls over the countryside. In the distance, you see Loch Nasul, a lake that seems to hold secrets in its shimmering waters. This is the Lake of the Eye, a place whispered about in stories as old as the hills around you. The lake appears almost otherworldly, its surface reflecting the darkening sky like a mirror, hinting at the mysteries below. As you approach the lake, the air feels different, charged with a subtle energy, as if the very ground is alive with stories. The edges of the lake are framed by grasses that move gently in the breeze, their movement barely disturbing the stillness of the water. You find a simple stone at the edge of the lake, worn smooth by the passage of time, and it offers a perfect place to sit and reflect. The water laps quietly against the shore, creating a rhythmic sound that soothes your thoughts. The lake's presence is almost palpable, as if it holds the memories of the past within its depths. There's an eerie beauty here, a sense that this place is a gateway to another time, another reality. Close your eyes and take a deep breath feeling the unique atmosphere of this place. Let your mind drift as we delve into the legend of Loch Nasul, the tale of Lou's epic victory. Fado, Fado. When the world was young and full of magic, the land of Ireland was a stage for the epic deeds of gods and heroes. Their stories are etched into the hills and valleys, whispered by the wind and carried in the songs of the bards. Among these tales, one stands out for its power and mystery the legend of Balor of the Evil Eye, a fearsome giant whose name struck both awe and terror into the hearts of all who heard it. Balor was the chieftain of the Fomorians, a race of giants known for their strength and ferocity. Standing taller than the tallest oak, his skin was as tough as ancient bark, and his single, enormous eye, known as the evil eye, glowed with a sinister light. This eye had the power to unleash fiery destruction upon anything it gazed upon, a power that Balor guarded jealously. His very presence struck terror into the hearts of his enemies, and his name became synonymous with doom. The Fomorians were a fearsome people, 
their society built on strength and dominance. They revered Balor for his power, seeing him as the ultimate warrior and protector. Under his rule, they sought to expand their territory, often clashing with the Thuha de Danon, the gods and heroes who ruled the fertile lands to the east. The Fomorian's fortress, a dark and foreboding structure, stood on a wind-swept promontory, overlooking the churning ocean. From this vantage point, Balor could survey his domain and keep a watchful eye on his enemies. For many years, the Fomorians under Balor's oppressive rule brought hardship and suffering to the Thuha de Danon. Their raids were relentless and their demands for tribute grew heavier with each passing season. The once lush fields of the Thuha de Danon now lay barren, the crops withered and the livestock thin. The people trudged wearily through the now desolate villages, their faces drawn with despair. They turned to their leaders, pleading for a glimmer of hope in these dark times. King Nuada sat on his throne his silver hand gleaming in the light of the great hall. The weight of years and battles fought was evident in the lines etched into his face and the weariness in his eyes. But still, he radiated wisdom and nobility, as befitting the ruler of the Thuhe Dedan. As he addressed his council, his gaze fell upon a young warrior named Lu. Lu was no ordinary warrior. His presence alone commanded respect and admiration, his striking appearance and confident demeanour setting him apart from the rest. Blessed with many skills, he was a master of combat, able to wield any weapon with ease and precision. But it wasn't just his physical prowess that set him apart. Lu was also known for his brilliant mind. Often outsmarting his opponents in battle with strategic manoeuvres. And when he wasn't fighting on the battlefield, he could be found crafting intricate designs and creations that displayed his unparalleled talent. These qualities earned him the title Lu of the Long Arm. A feared name among his enemies and a role model to his comrades. His youthful features were enhanced by an athletic build, making him seem almost superhuman in his abilities. But perhaps it was his golden hair that truly made him stand out. Shining like the sun, it reflected his light and brilliance among his people. A prophecy had been passed down for generations, ingrained in the minds of every member of the Thuha. It told of a great hero, born under a bright star, who would rise up to defeat his evil grandfather, Balor. The Thuha de Danon clung to this prophecy like a lifeline, 
their only glimmer of hope in the face of certain destruction. And so, when Lou entered the fray, they knew he was the one destined to save them all. Lou's mother, Etnu, had the piercing blue eyes and sharp features of a Fomorian princess. Many years before, she had escaped her father Balor's wrath and found sanctuary among the Tuha de Danon. As she raised her son in hiding, she whispered stories of the destructive power of his evil eye. The flames in Lou's young eyes burned with determination as he vowed to end Balor's reign of terror and bring peace to their people. King Nuada and his council saw in Lu the embodiment of hope and resilience. As they prepared for the inevitable confrontation, they placed their faith in this young warrior, whose lineage, talents and destiny made him the key to their liberation. The battle ahead would not only test their strength and courage, but also fulfil ancient prophecies and reshape the fate of their world. Lu and the Thuha de Danan gathered in a clearing deep in the forest. Their faces set with grim determination they had been training for weeks, perfecting their battle formations and crafting weapons infused with powerful magic. Each warrior knew their role in the upcoming battle against the Fomorians, led by the fearsome Balor. They would need more than just physical strength to defeat him. They needed strategy, courage and the unbreakable spirit of their people. As he trained, Lu's leadership qualities became evident. His vision for a united and prosperous Tuhe de Dalen gave his people the strength to endure their hardships and the courage to fight for their future. The night before the battle at Moitura, the Thuha de Danan camp was a hive of activity. Warriors sharpened their swords and spears The seers, their eyes glazed over and distant, used divination to pierce through the veil of the future. They sought any signs or omens that may impede their plans, carefully guiding their strategies like a ship through treacherous waters The air was thick with anticipation and the weight of what was to come. King Nuada stood before his people, his presence a calming and inspiring force. He spoke of their ancestors of the bravery and sacrifices that had brought them to this moment. He reminded them of their strength, their unity and their purpose. 
Tomorrow we fight not just for ourselves, but for the future of our land and our children, he declared, his voice steady and resolute. Lu weaved his way through the ranks of warriors, his voice carrying a blend of encouragement and sagacity that lifted drooping spirits. Stay strong, comrades, he called out. We've trained for this. Every swing, every block brings us closer to freedom. We're in this together. He stopped beside a young warrior who looked particularly anxious. Placing a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Without saying a word, he instilled a sense of calm determination in the boy. watching as he stood tall and ready to face whatever was to come. Stepping into the centre of the training ground, Lou drew his own sword with a flourish. The blade gleamed as it cut through the air in a wide arc. His steps were sure and his strikes purposeful. The warriors watched in awe, mesmerised by his mastery and the effortless grace with which he moved. The men were ready. Their postures straightened and their eyes sparkled with newfound determination. As the first light of dawn approached, the Thuha de Danon gathered in silence. The Druids performed the final rites blessing the warriors and invoking the favour of the gods. Lu stood at the forefront, his eyes fixed on the horizon where the Fomorian army would soon appear. He felt a deep sense of calm, knowing that they had done everything possible to prepare. Now it was time to fulfil the prophecy and reclaim their land. The plains of Moitura were shrouded in a heavy mist as the two armies faced each other. The Fomorians, with their towering forms and fearsome weapons, looked like a dark, impenetrable wall. The Thuha de Danon, though smaller in number, stood firm, their weapons gleaming and their resolve unshaken. The first clash was deafening. Swords met shields with a resounding crash, and the cries of warriors filled the air. The ground trembled under the weight of the combatants, and the air crackled with the energy of magic. The Thuha de Danon fought with a fierce determination, their movements fluid and precise. 
Lou moved through the battlefield like a force of nature. His spear struck true with every throw and his swordsmanship was unmatched. He seemed to be everywhere at once, rallying his comrades and striking down foes with equal ferocity. His presence inspired those around him, and the Thuha de Danan pushed forward with renewed vigour. In the midst of the chaos, a chilling roar cut through the din. Balor had entered the fray. Guided by his loyal warriors, the massive form of the Fomorian chieftain loomed over the battlefield. His single fearsome eye, known as the Evil Eye, remained closed. But the mere presence of Balor sent waves of fear through the ranks of the Thuha de Danon. Balor's massive frame shook with exertion as he and his burly warriors strained to lift the heavy lid of his deadly eye. The air around them grew thick with dread. Every muscle in their bodies tense as they prepared to unleash its devastating power. The Thuha de Danon faltered, their courage wavering under the threat of his gaze. Lu saw the devastation about to unfold, and he knew that the time had come. Weaving through the throng of combatants with determination, he made his way towards Balor. He could feel the heat of the impending destruction and the ground shaking beneath the giant's steps. Gripping his spear tightly, the weight of destiny pressed upon him. Lou stood opposite his evil grandfather. His muscles tense and his breath shallow. Lou's spear glinted in the sunlight as he took aim at Balor's single eye, which glowed with an ominous red light. With a mighty roar, Balor prepared to unleash its destructive power. But Lu was faster. He launched his spear with precise accuracy, hitting Balor's eye with a loud thud. The giant let out a howl of pain as the spear lodged itself deep into his eye, containing the destructive force within, before it could do any harm. With a deafening cry, Balor clutched his eye as it fell from its socket. The earth shook beneath his stumbling feet as he tried to regain his balance. The eye plummeted to the ground, creating a deep crater and sending shockwaves across the plains. 
As the dust settled, a glimmering lake appeared in the centre of the destruction. Loch Nasu, the Lake of the Eye. As Balor's immense body crumbled to the ground, the Fomorians let out a collective wail of despair. With their leader dead and their morale shattered, they were no match for the renewed strength of the Thuha Didanan. The sound of clashing swords filled the air as the two armies resumed the fight. The Fomorian forces were pushed back, retreating in disarray as the Thuha Didanan reclaimed their land with swift and decisive blows. As the sun set on the plains of Moitura, the air was filled with the taste of victory. A heady mix of adrenaline, sweat and triumph. Lou stood victorious over the fallen form of Balor, his chest heaving with exhaustion and elation. The threat that had loomed over his people was no more. The tyrant's fiery eye extinguished forever. As the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded, the Thuha de Danon gathered around the newly formed Thurloch. The lake, born from the fiery energy of Balor's eye, shimmered in the soft light of the setting sun. Its waters were crystal clear and still, a perfect reflection of the pink and orange sky above and the rolling hills that surrounded it. The surface was like a tranquil mirror, inviting all to gaze upon its peaceful nature. The Thurloch became a symbol of transformation and resilience. From the ashes of battle and destruction, a place of ethereal beauty had emerged. The Thuha de Danon, gazing upon it with pride, saw it as a testament to their indomitable courage and the enduring spirit of their people. The once barren land now teemed with life, with vibrant green foliage stretching towards the sky and crystal clear waters shimmering in the sunlight. It was a sacred place, imbued with the strength and determination of those who had fought for its existence. Lou was hailed as a hero, his name spoken with reverence and deep gratitude. Songs were sung of his bravery, and his deeds were immortalised in stories that would live on for millennia. The prophecy had been fulfilled, and the people celebrated their newfound freedom with joyous hearts 
and renewed spirits. The legend of the birth of Loch Nasul still echoes through the ages, reminding us to remain brave and strong in the face of adversity. It stands as a steadfast reminder that even in the depths of despair, there is always hope for rebirth and growth. The Thurloch, its glittering waters reflecting the vibrant greenery and tranquil atmosphere, continues to serve as a sacred haven for contemplation and motivation. An emblematic representation of the everlasting resilience possessed by the mythical Tuha de Danann. As you drift off to sleep now, imagine the serene beauty of the Thurloch, its waters calm and clear, reflecting the evening sky. Remember you too have the strength to overcome challenges and find renewal. Just as the Thurloch transformed from a place of fiery destruction to one of peace and beauty, so too can you find tranquility and strength within yourself. Thank you, dear listeners, for joining me tonight. These ancient tales are a part of our heritage, a testament to the enduring spirit of our land and of its people. As you drift further into sleep, let the calming images of the Thurloch and the bravery of Lou fill your dreams. Until next time, sleep well, dream deeply, and wake refreshed. Yee Good night.